Hi, my name is Nick and welcome to my introductory course in programming. I'm uh, remaking these videos because I was having a bit of trouble with um, the previous program I'm using, so I'm trying a different program. I hope it works a lot better. Anyway, I'm going to do this one a little bit different than the last one too. I'm going to keep what I'm going to be saying on the right in a notepad just so you can kind of look over it and review if, if you need to look over anything. And also I'm going to keep Visual Studio on the left. So I want to say real quick that we're going to be using Microsoft Visual Studio and we're going to be um, programming in C++. And uh, C++ is a specific pro programming language. There's a lot of different programming languages out there, and basically there are different ways of accomplishing goals. And that will become more clear the farther we, along we get. And when we get into C Sharp and some of the other stuff I'm going to be doing eventually. Anyway, <sighs> so let's get started. Um, thank you for taking the time to watch these videos. And if you have any questions, please post comments or uh, email me. Also, there's going to be two links. Um, and the, in the about section that are going to have the link to the express version of Microsoft Visual Studio um, which you can get for free and also a link to a book called Absolute C++ which I think is a really 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 good book you can get it on Amazon for like five bucks it's, it's dirt cheap and um, what that book has it has all the information that you could use that you may need for programming there's just all sorts of um, different explanations of data types and we'll get into all that sort of stuff but I think it's nice to have a, a good little um, reference to go back to. I, I use references all the time. There's also uh, a website called um, c++.com and you actually spell the plus so c-p-l-u-s-p-l-u-s.com. It's a really good resource. Okay, so after you install Microsoft Visual Studio this is the screen you get and it'll come up with a window and ask you what how you want to set up your Microsoft Visual Studio and you want to do c++. That's what you want to do. Okay, so um, let's see here. I want to start out just writing your first program. I think the best thing to do is just get started right away, and then we'll explain some more things when we get into it. Okay? So you want to click on New Project, right? And then this will pop up, and you want to do Visual C++ Empty Project because we're just doing a basic program. Okay? Let's do in the first program we're going to be doing is called Hello World. Hello, Hello World. Most programmers start out with Hello World. World. It's a pretty, pretty universal. At least in the academic world, academic uh, scene where you start out with this program because it's really simple and it kind of gives you an idea of how things work. Okay, so hit OK. Oh, oh, that's right, I already did this one, so we'll do Hello World too. <laughs> that shouldn't come up with you. Okay, so and it creates the project and brings up the screen here. Okay, there's different types of files that go along with every type of program, and we're going to start out with just a source file, just a basic file. So cl right click on source add new item okay c++ file okay and then source is fine you can do whatever you want just do source is fine okay then add okay and bring up this blank screen here okay each of these these are called lines okay and you put code in these lines that the computer will compile and then build into a program and then run okay so the computer doesn't know anything there's no code nothing at all so what you want to start out with is a basic input output stream there's these things called libraries and libraries have um, collections of functions that are pre-written and that's kinda what different languages have that they offer you is pre basically basically pre-written code and C++ has um, a lot of it and that's what we're gonna be using so we need to bring in some basic code so we can just do some basic programs. So how you do that is you include it. So pound include space and then you put and it's less than greater than science. That's what you put in the name of the file that has the name of the, the library, it's called libraries, which is collections of code. Okay. You put it in your library, the name of the library that you want to use. So we're going to use IO stream, which stands for stands for input output stream. Okay? then hit enter. Enter one more time. Okay. Now you have available to you all the starting input output stream um, functions. Okay. Now you need to name a name, it's called a namespace. A namespace is just basically you're naming your code. Like for example, uh, let's just say you and Bob are working on a project. Okay. And Bob writes a code and in the code he names 
what's called a variable. We'll explain all this stuff a little bit more later. But let's say you name's a variable number, and you name your another you name a uh, variable number. Well, you can't have two of the same names. So they do. So the creators of C plus plus came up with this idea of namespace, which allows you to use your own code along with somebody else's code in a specific namespace, and there won't be the conflicts of naming conventions. Okay, and they're called identifiers for variables. Okay, so. You say using you know, what what namespace you're using namespace okay and we're using the standard namespace and then you do a semicolon the semicolon expresses the end of an express what was called an expression okay this this line here this is an expression and the semicolon tells the compiler that's the end of the expression there's no more code and then re there's two main reasons for that first of all in C++ for style you never write anything more than 80 characters long in one line. So what if you have a line of code that requires more than 80 characters? Well, you can just hit enter and bring it to the next line, and then hit semicolon there, and that will the, the compiler will know the entire line is one line of code, one expression. Okay, cool. So that's what that's the point of the semicolon. Okay, now we need to have what are called a function in order to do any operations. So the beginning function, where everything is done, is in main. Makes sense, right? So that's how you do it int, we'll get into what that is later, int space main parentheses and then open bracket and close bracket okay so there there's that and that's the very this is the most basic program you can have well actually you wouldn't even have to have the include honestly you could just have namespace and main now would I mean it wouldn't do anything but that's the simplest code you can, the program you can have and this is generally how if you're doing just basic C++ little programs to learn how things work, this is how you'd start out. Okay, so we're gonna do we're gonna write some more code. So you need the program needs to know when to end. So how you tell it that is you say return zero. Now the program when it reaches that it realizes that there's no more code and it ends the program. Okay, so that's what that is. So you need to have that, and then you may want to actually do something, right? Remember earlier we added this include up here input output stream. Now there are different functions within this input output stream that that you can use, and one of them is C out console out or count. I do I say count, but you know everyone has a different way of saying it. C out it means console out. It tells the it tells the um, the operating system that you want to output something to the console, which is the screen. Okay, so C out, and then you want to do an operator. Okay, space, and then in parentheses semicolon. Okay. Anything inside these parentheses, parentheses will now be displayed in the screen. Okay, so let's do the first program. Hello, world! Explanation mark. Okay, yeah, your program's done. Now you've written your first program. Now normally you can just build this and run it. The problem is, is we're using Visual Studio, and Visual Studio will just run it and close the window. So we want to want to pause it so you can see what you've done. And how to do that is console n c n. Okay, get semicolon. What that does is it waits for a response, any response, and then it will store that response inside the parentheses. But we're not worried about that right now. That basically just gives you a pause so you can see what happens. Okay? So then you hit Control F5. And it builds it. Alright. Give it a second. Boom. Hello world. You wrote your first program. Yay! Cool. Okay. So then hit Enter. And you're done. Now I want to explain something quick about programming too. There's two basic what are called paradigms on programming, and that is procedural programming and object-oriented programming. And I'm just going to read the definitions real quick, just and I'll explain what they really are. Okay. Um, the procedural programming paradigm uh, is action-oriented because it focuses on the tasks that must be done to solve a problem. So basically, your 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 uh, procedural programming is just getting the tasks done. There's not any there's organization behind it, but it's, it's different. And then there's another one called object-oriented programming. We'll get into exactly how later. Object-oriented programming, where a programmer determines what objects are needed for a problem and how they should work together to solve a problem. So basically, you write what are called classes, and you use classes to solve problems. So instead of just writing out, um, oh, you know, add this, subtract this, display this, you'd write a program that represents something in the real world that and that operates on a, on a specific like operations to do that and to solve a problem and that's something we'll get into later. It's kind of complex. It gets it's there's a lot to it. So um, there's all sorts of different things associated with object oriented programming, um, encapsulation, all that sort of stuff. We'll, we'll get into that stuff later in classes and whatnot. 
and oh, my daughter's here. <laughs> and so, um, anyway, that's that. And um, you wrote first program. And uh, thank you for watching. And if you have any questions, please post them, and or email me. And uh, please download. Uh, or I'm sorry, get that book. That's a very useful book. So, um, thanks for watching, and uh, see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, please like it.